Hi folks, uh, this is Dr. Ravi Kamapali. Uh, I'm a board certified infectious disease, wound care and obesity medicine physician practicing in Lima, Ohio uh, since uh, 2003. We're going to be starting a series of uh, a case presentation with the patient's perspective uh, uh, along with the uh, case that is being presented. And uh, this involves uh, our philosophy uh, that uh, uh, we are going to be uh, proposing to uh, the healthcare community and also the patient care community that involves uh, removing barriers to healing as a, a method of uh, a care delivery. Uh, this format would involve a presentation of a case of a, a patient's problem and the steps we took to remove the barriers to healing and uh, also interview with the patient and the patient's uh, uh, family members. And I do think that uh, this is an amazing time to be in healthcare, and uh, amazing things are going to happen down the road. Uh, and all my bias in this whole thing is nothing but uh, passion for uh, delivering healthcare in infectious disease, wound care, obesity medicine using technology uh, like telemedicine, and also uh, solutions that we'll be bringing uh, to the healthcare community. Uh, in uh, Ohio and all around the world. Thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, folks will be enjoying it. Hi, folks. Uh, this is Dr. Kamapali, uh, recording the first case of the case-based approach to wound healing with an addition of uh, patient perspective along with the course of the patient's care. This is a 61-year-old female with problems with uh, multiple sclerosis since 1988 and uh, has been uh, wheelchair bound since 2012 and developed uh, a coccyx ulcer in March of 2017 along with uh, undergoing lithotripsy in March and April of 2017 and uh, patient uh, essentially presented to our office and uh, May 8th, 2017, ending up uh, having a direct admission to the hospital. After significant education to the patient's uh, family members, uh, we were able to get a, a diverting colostomy done and a coccyx ulcer debridement done after initial salvage approach to the wound healing was not helping. And after the acute debridements and uh, diverting colostomy and Foley placements were done, and moisture avoided as much as possible. She was uh, transferred to long-term acute care facility on uh, May 24th, 2017. We ended up continuing with wound bed preparation and uh, essentially did a delayed secondary closure instead of a flap procedure on uh, 6-12, 2017. And, uh, she ended up getting discharged on uh, 6 30, 2017, and uh, uh, the staples were removed and the wound healed on 7 6, 2017. So, within uh, uh, less than two months, the wound went on to heal uh, remarkably well. And uh, the idea of uh, this case presentation is to show that uh, there is different approaches that we can take uh, to heal uh, chronic ulcers that are uh, very slow to heal. And uh, basically, if you see the presentation of this uh, nice female, she essentially was sitting in a, a wheelchair for a long time. And you see a classic uh, kissing ulceration where uh, the moisture is being retained in this area, how much meticulous the family was trying to take care of uh, her. And the more impact was in the middle, if you see the uh, deep tissue injury changes. And uh, basically, that essentially ended up uh, causing the wound to continue to worsen. And here, if you see this uh, ulceration, uh, continued to organize more after she had presented. And uh, as the wound continued to get more organized, we were able to then 
decide and convince the family that the continued moisture and the continued uh, deep tissue in injury uh, essentially would uh, warrant uh, uh, an approach of aggressive uh, debridement wherein uh, the surgical debridement was done and uh, uh, diverting colostomy also was done at the same time. After this was done, so patient was transferred and a, uh, a negative pressure therapy was initiated and uh, uh, slowly but steadily the wound continued to take some form and if you see here there is a uh, uh, tissue that is a fibrous tissue inside and rest of the wound bed essentially uh, is noted to be showing improvement with uh, growth of polymicrobial organisms in that area so antibiotic therapy was initiated uh, and uh, she essentially continued to uh, show improvement with uh, uh, still the fibrous tissue present there and essentially repeat cultures were done to make sure that uh, the wound continued to have uh, uh, reduced bacterial burden and uh, a decision was made uh, to essentially on 6-12-2017 after the uh, repeat cultures were done and made sure that uh, there is uh, no growth of bacteria uh, decision was made to offer the patient and her family the option of uh, uh, flap procedure versus delayed uh, secondary closure and the family chose the delayed secondary closure uh, given the uh, risks of uh, a flap procedure and this was done uh, at uh, bedside and as you see the wound continued to uh, be stable but uh, an area of uh, uh, pull through that was uh, tight was noted on the sutures and uh, slowly this area was closely monitored and uh, we had uh, decided that uh, uh, that area was getting too tenacious so decision was made to uh, remove those uh, top sutures that were tight and uh, wound uh, essentially improved uh, with that approach and then uh, as she essentially went on to have a nice healing ulcer bed uh, with a suture line that is uh, intact and uh, the staples were uh, gently monitored closely and uh, only local betadine was applied and uh, you see here the on 6 8 2017 the all the staples were removed and uh, uh, she essentially had been home and uh, she continued to be stable and uh, uh, she essentially presented for her final visit uh, with this wound that is nice and pristine but she continues to have a foley catheter that is going to be more that has been that is being monitored and if you see the trajectory of the wound healing uh, she essentially continued and uh, went on to heal. Please also watch the uh, patient interview uh, that was given by the patient uh, and the patient's uh, husband. Uh, thank you very much and uh, please uh, watch the patient's perspective on, the, on their take on the care process and uh, the problems they had. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you for coming. Hi Valerie, so thank you for coming and uh, agreeing to this interview and uh, um, tell me a little bit about uh, Valerie, Mr. Campbell. Well, Valerie has uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh -huh. She was diagnosed uh, almost 30 years ago mm -hmm. and, uh, and it didn't really progress until 1998. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she was starting to lose her ability to stand for periods of time and then gradually developed in about 2006 where she wasn't walking anymore. Mm -hmm. And we've transported her around in a wheelchair. And mm -hmm. then did the ulcer start? The ulcer started in early, mid-April of uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. And we had an appointment with your office on May 8th. Okay. So we saw her on May 8th and we admitted her to the hospital. Right. And uh, at, at uh, St. Rita's Hospital. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, tell, tell so that people know the course. I, in your words, can you tell me what happened? What was your frustration initially? <laughs> and uh, conclude. Yeah. 
Well, I wasn't expecting uh, uh, that the treatment would would be done immediately in the hospital. Mm. And uh, uh, the, all I heard at that point, well, we have to have surgery, we have to, to set her up with an ostomy, we have to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute here. Let's, let's uh, slow down and, and explain a little bit more about this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then I think at the time, uh, so let's get her into the hospital. And, and I remember hearing something about you had, had to, to be out of town for a day. And I thought, well, why are we going into the hospital if, if uh, she's just going to sit there? So, yeah. so, so that was part of my frustration. Yeah. And then we explained it, and you were happy. And then we got in there, and then we got we had to have, get a surgeon. Then we cleaned the wound, and then we had to do a, a, a bag, a colostomy bag. What were your questions regarding the colostomy bag? Well, not not knowing much about it, uh, I wanted to know if it was something that was temporary, or if it was going to be permanent. I've never dealt with with colostomy bags. I know people who have, but I've never been intimately involved in in the care. And what was your understanding uh, before and after we explained the reasoning behind it? What was your question exactly and what was, uh, what are you seeing it now like? Yeah. Well, why did she have to have it? And mm -hmm. you explained that, that if we're treating this, since, it's, since the wound was on her backside, we had to keep the area infection free. So we couldn't have feces around it, we couldn't have urine around it, and uh, in talking with the surgeon and he said well she's kind of a thin lady so he didn't anticipate a lot of issues with it and and in fact so uh, after the I, surgery yeah. it was he said it took a lot a lot less time than, than he anticipated and and she, and in the part initially when we were doing all this I did explain to you about uh, uh, possibility of a flap procedure right uh, and uh, 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 and also I did explain to you about different options of possibly early closure of this site. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I'm happy that you agreed with the plan and I'm happy that our good surgeon did a colostomy. And then uh, what was the next phase after the surgery? Well, uh, they, they had the, 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 the bad, I guess the bad tissue or muscle was, was, was removed. So there was an opening. Mm -hmm. um, and they we did they, the wound vacuum. We did the and wound vacuum, and and uh, that kept moisture uh, sucked away from the. And then the we site. transferred her to the long-term facility, the, right, the, the kindred the, care, kindred mm -hmm. hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, how did you think the care was there, and what was going on there? It it was pretty good. It, it's it's different than than St. Rita's because it's short-term acute care, and they have seem to have people in there more often, and where. Uh, but the long term, it's it's the uh, uh, visitation was a little bit mm -hmm. bit less. Uh, mm -hmm. I did have help from from Valerie's home health aide, mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to uh, have and the, her bathed. And, and the staff was care. good there, and they were yes, they were good. And then the question is, uh, then what were the steps that we went through? A different process of cleaning it, the wound up a few times, right. debriding the wound, debriding the wound. Around. And that is called as wound bed preparation. And then right. we talked about different options, including doing a flap versus delayed secondary closure. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what did you think the risks, and uh, why did you choose what you chose? Well, I, I, my understanding of what the flap was, I guess, was a little bit different. I, I was in picturing a graft. Yeah. And and uh, but when when the wound was closed uh, and stapled and sutured. Mm -hmm. uh, what was, we what we chose were the two procedures to explained to you. We had to get a, a plastic surgeon to do the flap versus me closing it in a delayed secondary fashion, right. avoiding a flap and also avoiding another major surgery and the risks of breaking down of the skin with what we did. Uh, and uh, you chose the second route wherein we could close the wound right. and keep it, uh, hopefully she's not going to have complication. Yes. So, so the major thing with uh, what we did is uh, after we prepared the wound bed, and I think uh, in uh, by uh, um, uh, we after we admitted her to the hospital and sent her to Kindred, we 
closed the wound on 6-12 right. at 2017 mm -hmm. and then by 7-6-2017 we took all the staples out right. and then uh, as of uh, today's visit for follow-up she's uh, very uh, stable and uh, the wound is very intact and right. stable mm -hmm. and uh, the suture line is very well and today is what 723 2017 823 oh sorry yes, yeah. <laughs> 823 2000 this is a month after the last month's follow up right and uh, uh, overall my one question to you is uh, do you want the colostomy reversed at this point no okay uh, so the, most of the, the problems problem. most of the problems the reason i asked you that question is most of the problems when i tell my patients Mm -hmm. uh, regarding uh, colostomy, they ask me whether it's a temporary or permanent. Right. The question is, it, it depends. And in person uh, who is uh, who is like her, who is not able to m move either because of MS or because of uh, uh, quadriplegia or paraplegia, mm -hmm. there it is. It is a colostomy which should not be reversed. The reason being that issue that caused the original problem of moisture mm -hmm. in the coccyx area will reoccur and the whole process happens all over again. Right. I've seen, I've happen. seen many patients like that. Yeah. So basically the problem with her initially and in the future also is loss of subcutaneous fat and muscle mm -hmm. in the coccyx area and the coccyx area is like that with the right. moisture in between and the skin breaks down. Yes. So what I do is my classic uh, Kamapali kissing but also dressing mm -hmm. where I take uh, four, four gauzes and r roll them out and with tape on the margin and I put it in the groove in the uh, coccyx area like that and keep the coccyx area as open as possible and that has helped a lot of patients. It does, yeah. And, the, and we can see it, it helped keep moisture away. Uh, we were kind of joking about it looked like something from from Cheech and Chong, the giant joint. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have to look it up. I don't know anything about it. I'm culturally challenged a little bit. But so, it's, so, but it's worked out. It's so, Valerie, you like the whole outcome, huh? Okay, I'm happy for you, my dear. Okay, if you have any problem, you can always you can always call. Have your husband call. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.